Hey there, everybody. I'm doing a uh, deep drive tutorial here. So I'm going to take a little bit longer in the first couple of innings. I'm playing a uh, game, uh, let me see, there's seven and six, game 14 of the 2019 New York Mets replay that I'm doing. We are in Atlanta at SunTrust Park, and the Mets are going to be facing Sean Newcomb. Sean Newcomb was six and three with a 316 ERA. Uh, he was in 55 games. He started some and he relieved in some. He had a 1.3 whip, 66 strikeouts in 68 in 65 strikeouts, excuse me, in 68 innings pitched. All right, so uh, let's get started. And first, I want to look at the cards quickly. So let's look uh, at the cards here. And as you can see, um, it's it's got a deep drive section. So if you roll 0 to zero 07, you're going to hit in deep drive. Then you can look in this little box here. If it's got a little insignia, that means you're going to take into consideration the park effects. So let's say I roll anywhere between 0 and 19. It's going to be a park effect home run rather than a straight out home run. Now, if I roll up to a home run is up to 25. So if I roll anywhere between uh, 20 and 25, it's a straight up home run. There's no park effect. Now, if I roll an 80 or a 99, it's going to be in a fly ball. And that fly ball could carry over the fence. So that makes it exciting as well. So you never know if a fly ball is going to be a home run for sure or it's going to be a potential out. And also the home run, of course, could be an out as well. So that's a, a very kind of uh, dra dramatic um, effect in the game. So when there's a deep drive, you don't know exactly what it's going to be. And then you got the triples and then the doubles in between those home run or fly out opportunities. Now that's where when it, there's an insignia, you're going to uh, drop the modifier die, which is the green die. And an eight, for example, on the ballpark chart would be a fly, a deep fly ball to center field. So had I roll that, had I rolled a, a, for example, a seven, which would fall into the ballpark zero to 19, it would be a home potential home run, but then I would roll the, the mod die and, oh, I have a, a cable sitting in front of my, my camera. I didn't notice that. Hold on a second. <laughs> All right. I, had, I moved my, my camera yesterday because I was doing a uh, – I was showing some ball stat uh, work that I've been doing. All right. So going back to what I was talking about, um, we're looking at, at the Ozzy Albee star, uh, card. Now up here it tells me he's a switch hitter. So these cards are fairly clean, and one thing I really like about them is that the the letters and the numbers are huge. So I don't have any trouble seeing these. So that's a real big plus. I really like that. So he kept his card pretty clean. Now, the thing you'll use the less probably are the stats. They're a little bit smaller at the bottom. But the general, the, 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 the typical numbers that you use most often are fairly large, as you can see. Now, here it tells me what type of second baseman he is. He's a three which I guess would be a, 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 on a, maybe an average second baseman at the major league level. Um, and, and he does that by the stats. I mean, he goes purely by metrics in deciding what number they get. If you feel, guess what? If you feel they're better than, than what they've been gauged, guess what you can do? That's right. You can write on there, put a little pencil mark, and say he's a four. He's better than he's been uh, uh, graded, if you will. Okay, so let's let's look up and down his card. So he batted, it tells me down here, he had 24 home runs. He had a 295 average. So he's definitely an above average player. Up here on the upper right hand corner is his injury rating, which uh, is an A. And, I, and looking at his at bats, he had 702 plate appearances. So that automatically tells me this guy does not get injured very, very much. So I guess it would start off at A and then we'll go down from there. So 0 to zero 07 is a deep drive. 8 to 10 is a single plus. This gives you extra RBIs. He only had 86 RBIs, although he had 24 home runs, so he's not going to get a lot of single pluses because this allows guys to score from second base much easier. So there's a lot of uh, nuance in this game that may not be apparent uh, you know, uh, the first time you look at it. Then you have the 11 to 15 single, which doesn't advance the players the same way a single plus advances them. So this may be questionable when there's a runner at second base, but this single plus, more often than not, he's going to score 
the runner on second is going to score on this sort of single. And I guess this could be uh, uh, for players that drove in 140 runs or 130 runs, they would have more single pluses because more of their hits turn into runs scored or RBIs. So 11 to 15 is a single. 16 to 18 is a base on balls. And uh, there you go. I'm not sure. Does it say how many walks he had? He had an on-base percentage of 352, pretty decent on-base percentage. He had no hit by pitches, so that's blank. 19 to 22 is a strikeout, so he didn't strike out very much. 23 to 26 is a defensive check. You look at the range, you look at the uh, error rating. So this is pretty good in terms of giving you a variety, and the charts are giant. gigantic. The charts are, are healthy. In other words, there's a lot of different results that could come about based on a lot of different factors, particularly the, the fielder um, who you're dealing with. But you don't know who that's who, who the error or who the range issue is going to be on. It, you have to roll for that, and it's on a separate chart, and it's going to tell you, well, it's on the left fielder. Not, not unlike uh, Strat, although Strat tells you second base X, right? Strat would say second base X. This one just tells you defense. This is more like payoff pitch. And then you're going to look, you're going to roll, and on this chart here, um, on the oh, come back, come back to me, my friends. Do not run away from me. And he's back. That's a 20 side dive for Strat. Okay, so right here is your ch defensive chart. So basically, if you roll, let's say I roll two dice, let's say I roll a uh, let's move that out of the way, and uh, let's just say I roll an 83. Well, I know that would be down here, 83 would, would be the left fielder. Okay, and uh, if he's a four, it's a single. If he's a three, it's a single plus, a two, a single plus, and so forth. So let's just say I roll a zero five. Well, that would take me to the error chart, which is right next to it, right? Let's say I roll zero five. Well, that's an error chart, and I would go to zero five, and I would look, and it says first base uh, first base error on second baseman or one base error, excuse me, one base error on second baseman. That's right here. If I roll a zero five. So depending on what you roll, you have one roll. Let's say I roll right there. It's a 46. I just rolled a 46. You can see that there. I would go right there. It's first baseman error, potentially. No, not, not an error, but it would be a defensive chart, which would be a potential single if he doesn't move very well, a one first baseman or a zero first baseman would allow a hit on that. But as you go higher, 47, 48, 49, or 50, it becomes easier to to. So th there's a lot of different possible results depending on how you roll. You really never know what the outcome is going to come, uh, what is what the outcome is going to look like. So that's really exciting. Now continuing on Ozzy Albi's card, 27 to 49 is an out. Okay, so that range is an out. Then you're going to roll one die. If I roll a three, that says he grounded to the third baseman, and that's a 5-3 put out. He also has let, – let's look here at his steal rating. His steal rating is a 1B. Um, it doesn't say how many stolen bases. Oh, it does. He had 15 stolen bases. So, you know, that's an okay steal rating, not a great steal rating. He, he has no run uh, quality because he's an average runner. But that changes. If there's two outs, he could become a fast runner. Okay, so he could be a fast runner or an average runner. And that's based on metrics. It's not based on, hey, um, you know, uh, he's a real fast player. No, it's based on metrics. So I don't know exactly how he does that. So uh, now here are the outs. So I rolled a three. Once I find out it's in his out range, then I'm going to roll a three. Or if I roll a five, it would be a ground ball to shortstop. If I roll a nine, it would be a fly out to center field. So this is a pretty simple card to read. I just went over the whole card for you. Ozzy Albies. Now, Josh Donaldson hit 37 home runs. Okay. So he's going to have a bigger deep drive possibility for a home run. It goes zero to 49. So it's not only here, right, but it also passes over to the deep drive box. So this is, uh, you know, there's depth and complexity here on these cards. Um, he had four stolen bases, so he's going to be a zero C in terms of stolen bases. Uh, he struck out 
many more times than Albies did. So he's got a 22 to 33 strikeout range. And that's how the thing is, uh, is set up. Now the pitchers, let me go over the pitchers real quick. Jason Vargas, uh, 50 to 99. Jason Vargas had a 451 ERA. He was 7 to 9, 36-year-old pitcher. Um, so let's go over some of – he's a lefty, upper left-hand corner. His injury rating, a B. He had a pretty good uh, healthy season. Here goes his his uh, defensive ability is a two. All right, he's a two, so that means he's below average. Now his hold rating is a plus one. That means not that great on the hold. He's going to give the runner a plus one. Let's look at the uh, endurance is nine, and that's the rule. The one page rule book tells you how to calculate that. It's basically for each inning. That's the most, uh, I guess, uh, uh, influential. One, It's a negative one for each inning. So if he pitches six innings, he's only got three left. And then there's a couple of other things, how many runs you give up and how many times you've been through the batting order. The more times through the batting order, the more, the more you lose. So each time through the batting order is a minus one. So if you go through the batting order twice and you pitch six innings, that's eight, and you gave up three runs, that would be nine. So he would be to his endurance limit and he would become – fatigued all right and fatigued is a simple way they deal with it but it's very effective now here have the number of days rest he needs i i don't necessarily think you need to have that there i don't know um i don't know why that's there and it's taking up a lot of space on this card why they thought that was like so critical like i mean who would pitch their starting pitcher which one of us here raise your hand if you would pitch your starting pitcher, you know, more more often than than than. Uh, I mean, this thing. If you're going to do that, this thing's not going to stop you. So I'm going to have to disagree big time with taking up all that space for rest, and it takes up huge space. I guess he needed something, and he didn't know what to put in there. I don't know, but uh, you know, all starting pitchers have to rest four days, and they can only go no more than six innings, seven innings if you got like uh, shirts or somebody like that, or or or, or Verlander or you know, one of those guys, but otherwise 90% of the guys can only go six innings the most five in, in many instances. So telling me that he needs four days rest is preposterous, particularly, I mean, I, I, I use actual lineups, but even if I didn't use actual lineups, which one of us raise your hand, which one of us uh, would basically pitch their best pitcher. If this guy were a good pitcher, like who would pitch Verlander every day? I mean, that would, it would, it would be, idiocy right anyway he bats he's a c batter and that tells you um what type of what type of card to use here are the cards and he would use a, a c card he's got his own every player every player is included in the set and he's got a batting card so i don't have to worry about pulling a c card for him um let me see d f i don't know my c card is probably in, in somewhere else i don't know i think i used them for another set yeah but you can print as many as you want of these, so you can have extras. So in case, you know, what happens to me a lot of times, I leave them in the previous team. I leave them in the lineup of the previous team when I switch teams. All right, so we're going over Jason Vargas's card. So we did endurance. We did he bats C, and that tells you what pitcher hitting card to use. Wild pitch. Now, when you roll, when there's somebody on base and you roll a 0, 5, a 0, 0, when you roll 0, 0, to zero five, right? You're going to look on this chart right here, and I'm going to show you the chart. It's very simple, easy to read. It's right in here, all right? And it's going to tell you you're going to re roll, you're going to re roll, a re roll. And I rolled a 36. I go to 36, and it says if pitcher W uh, wild pitch rating is C, D, or F, it's a wild pitch. So let's look at Vargas. Is he a C, D, or an F? He's a wild pitch C. So that's a wild pitch. That's how simple it is. Balk. The ball comes up sometimes. And then he's a balk A. So he, I think he, he may have balked. I'm not sure what that means. No, no, maybe he didn't. That's it. Maybe he didn't, so he would get an A. So it's unusual that he would balk. Because the lower letters are the ones that come up more often, uh, like C, D, and E, and so forth. So this is um, pickoff. His pickoff move is a C, and you would look 
And on the same chart, all this comes off the same chart, pick off. If pitcher rating is A, B, or C, it's a pick off. So he is a C, so he would potentially pick somebody off if I roll that number, whatever that number was. Uh, let's say it was an 80, A, B, or C. Let's say I rolled a 79 or an 80. So it doesn't happen all that often, but it happens. So that's how that would work. And uh, and now it's the 50 to 99 comes off the pitcher card. Oh, I lost it. 50 to 99 is trying to adjust there. I'm moving a lot. So, all right. 50 to 99. Let me see. Let me move my hand a little bit. 50 to 99 would be off the pitcher's card. 50 to 54 is a deep drive, which would you would go then and use the, the box on the batter's card. So if the batter hit home runs, he would have a good opportunity to hit a home run. If he didn't hit many, he wouldn't have an opportunity. 55 to 56 is a single plus. Uh, 57 to 59 is a regular single. 60 to 64 is a base on balls. No hit by pitch. That would have to come off the batter card. Uh, 60, in this case, 65 to 72 is a strikeout. Not a big strikeout guy. Struck out 124 and 149 innings. Defense, defensive check would be 73 to 75, and then 76 to 99 is an out. That's how that would work. So I went over a pitcher card, and I went over a batter card for you. And now what I'm going to do is, and the, the, the tricky thing is, well, it's tricky because it's a little time-consuming. I'm going to start the game. I'm going to use I-score. And um, the, the – well – for example, you can see that Jason Vargas, although he's pitching for the Mets, has a Philadelphia label on him and has a red upper uh, top there um, border because the, all players are included, but the player is carded with the last team that he played on. That's uh, that's so it, it, it creates a little bit more of a drag for me, who I only print out the teams that I'm playing. So then I have to go into another section and look for the extra players, and then I have to print out. And then i go, got to go to another team. It's not like I can just print out all the Mets because he won't come up. He won't show up on the Mets. That's one thing that I'm questioning as to how much more work would it be if all this is done, you know, uh, on a, on a, with a program. How much work, work would, more work would it be just to, you know, add the extra numbers for him as a Met? You know, uh, because he played most of the season with the Met. I think they traded him in in uh, in August or, or no, July thirty first is trade deadline. So I think they traded him at towards the middle or end of July. So he he had a long streak with the Mets, and he pitched well with the Mets. Uh, I think he pitched better with the with the Mets than he did with Phillies because I know I noticed he has a like four fifty ERA. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I wanted to do that little introduction out of SunTrust ballpark card. A zero to four is a home run when you roll. Uh, five is a fly ball deep left field. Six to eight is a fly deep center field, and uh, a nine would be a fly ball nine. Now, when you hit a fly ball, there's a chart for that, which is nice because you don't know what's going to happen. It allows you to to advance to third. Let's say you want to tag from second to third. Well, on a fly ball to right field. A deep fly ball to right field, it gives you some opportunities to do that. And to score, to get home, it's much easier if you're a deep fly ball to, to right field and so forth. So you can see it's a, it's a nice, interesting chart that makes, like let's say you fly out to left field um, and you want to go home, not as easy as if you fly out to, to right field. Deep to right field would be easier to score. Deep to left field would be a little bit harder. Only the faster guys can score, but the other guys have an, a, an opportunity to try it. And then you have, of course, to to uh, move to third. It's more unusual on a regular fly to left. On a shallow fly to left, forget it. You're not you're not going to tag and go to third from second. But on a deep fly to third, faster runners have the opportunity to do that which is uh, – so a deep fly to, to left, I think I said third. A deep fly to left gives the, the runner on second a better opportunity to uh, advance. So, so these are th – th this is really cool. It's easy to read, and it flows. It's not like it's, it's, it's clunky at all. It's very, very smooth and sophisticated and elegant in, in the transitions. So there's no bumpy where you feel like, oh, I got to go – I got to do this now. And there's only two charts. These are the two charts. There's one here. All right. And then there's this other one with the defense and the pitcher catcher and the stolen base.
That's it. And the rules are one page. This page and then the other side. That's all you she wrote. So I got to go today. I'm going to go to Office Depot and I'm going to have these laminated. Now I want to put, I want to put, uh, use different color paper so I can just pick up, like I'll know that, for example, the defensive chart information, actually defensive chart is with the wild pitch and the stolen base. So out of those things, I guess I would use the defensive chart the most. So maybe I would make that like blue and the other one I would make yellow or green. So I would know, okay, the blue is the defensive chart. And then because they look white and I can't, and a lot of times I'm looking around to see what's what. Uh, I have to look at them both to figure out where I'm, uh, where I'm going to, what I'm going to use. All right. So let's get started with the game. Let's roll some dice. And uh, I hope that helped a little bit clarify in case anybody was considering. Now you can try like 2018 that you can get the boat, the World Series teams. The 2018 World Series teams you can get uh, for a dollar, and just download them, print them out, and um, easy peasy. So it's wait a second. Oh, okay, I have the wrong the wrong batter. Okay, so the Mets are in Atlanta, so the Mets are going to be up first. It's going to be Jeff McNeil leading it off. Now, I score will allow me to know what Jeff McNeil is batting. If you click on him, he's batting 310. He's 13 for 42 on the season. He's got no stolen bases. He's got two home runs. So that's Jeff McNeil having a pretty good season here on tabletop. All right, so 53, a 53 off of – it's going to be off the pitcher, Sean Newcomb. I, I use my batter's left and then have my pitcher's right. 53 is a single plus. So that's a ground ball up the middle and through into center field, Acuna. Gets to it quickly and throws it in. Jeff McNeil took took a wide turn at first base. So now we're going to be looking out for wild pitches, pass balls, and pickoffs, and so on and so forth. It's Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso, his stats for the season for the this is the fourteenth game of the season. He's got uh, two home runs. He's ten for fifty. So he got off. He's gotten off to a slow start. And that's a forty-one. That's not going to be a wild pitch. Uh, 41 is going to be an outrange. He rolled a nine, so that's going to be a fly ball to center field. Ronald Acuna is out there. He's under it, puts it away. One down. Now I could try to steal. McNeil had uh, five stolen bases, so I don't bother with that. All right, it's a lot of uh, – I'm not going to bother with him stealing. If there was somebody else, maybe I would. But uh, Michael Conforto is a left-handed batter, batting third today. Uh, on deck is J.D. Davis. So that's a 30, a 30, and that's going to be a strikeout. Conforto strikes out. High cheese gets Conforto, and there's two outs now, and it's J.D. Davis. That's a 32, 32 on Davis's card is a defensive check. So we're going to roll two dice to see what, and it's an 18. That's going to take us to the error chart, see how fast this goes. And it's a 0-9, and a 0-9 is going to tell me first base error on the third baseman. So it's a ground ball to Donaldson, and he boots it, rolls away from him. McNeil's going to stop at second. So it's an E5, first and second now with two outs. And it's Travis Darno. It's a 43, so it's not a wild pitch. 43 is going to be an out on Travis Darno's card. And it's a one out, so that's line and caught by the first baseman, Freddie Freeman. Line drive three, and that's going to retire the side. Travis Darno actually gets released by the Mets, DFA'd, if you will, and ends up signing with the Tampa Bay Rays. And he goes on to have a, an ex above average season for a catcher, 16 home runs, 250 batting average. Hit, actually hit three home runs against the Yankees sometime in the season. I don't remember when. I think it was maybe August. All right, so that was one inning of play. It plays real smooth, as you can see. Ozzie Albies is going to come up. He's going to face the lefty, Jason Vargas. And that's a 0-6. That's going to be a deep drive on Albies, and I can show you how this works. And that's a 0-8. That's going to be a, a potential home run, but it falls within the ballpark range of 0, because that has an insignia. falls within the ballpark range of 0 to 19. So a 0-8 is going to take us to the ballpark card, and the modifier die is an 8, 
We're going to look here, and it's a deep drive center field. Back goes Ligaris to the track, to the wall. Makes the catch. Nope. Hit ground, ground out. Let's try that again. So it's a deep fly out for Ozzy Albies. And it's Josh Donaldson, pitch from Vargas. It's a 76, and that's going to be an out. What kind of an out? It's an eight. It's a fly ball to right field. High fly, right fielder, met right fielder, Michael Conforto under it, makes the catch, two away, and it's Freddie Freeman. 60. Freddie Freeman, 60, and that's going to be ball four. So Freeman walks, two out walk to Freddie Freeman. That brings up Ronald Acuna. Now we're going to roll to see, we're going to check to see if there's a wild pitch. 99, so it definitely is not. 99 is in Vargas' out range. It's a five out on the modifier. And that's a hard hit ball to the shortstop. Rosario is going to flip to McNeil, and that's going to retire the side. So that was one inning of play. It's a very fast-moving game. I think this is the fastest-moving game um, that I've played outside of outside of APA Basic, to be honest with you. I've played APA Basic games in 20 minutes. I haven't been able to play this in 20 minutes because it's a modern game. And what happens is once you hit the seventh inning, you got to start doing crazy pitching changes. And since I'm in the National League, I got to do double switches and all that. But I can guarantee you that this would – and I'm going to test it out. I'm going to guarantee you that this could give Apple a run for its money in terms of not simplicity. This has more depth and detail, much more detail, detailed and, and, and deep than, than the Apple basic game. So this is like the perfect world for APA players. If, for example, um, you're, you're like APA basic is too basic, like there's not enough individuality um, in terms of all the different pitchers or individualism, if you will, um, of all the APA pitchers, uh, because it seems like every APA pitcher who's an A, like AYZ, uh, it's like the same as every other AYZ. And how many AYZs you got? You got a lot of AYZs or maybe BYZs. Or... So that's the issue with APA, and that's why they did, they designed the Marino boards. This, to, to kind of be a little bit in between, but that's all chart-based. This is not chart-based. This is all card-based. There's just a couple of charts, and, and you don't look at them all the time. So in a perfect world, APA would have had a system that is like deep drive. In other words, it's not as complicated as, let's say, uh, the master, the Apple Master game, but it's not as simple as the basic game. It gives you just, it's, it's still simple enough, but it gives you that added individualism for each player. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's like if you grab Apple and you grab Strat and you got all the best things from them and put them into one game, um, that's what this is most like. Now, I'm not saying that's what absolutely what it is, but it's most like that. So right now, we're in the top of the second inning. There's no score. Keon Broxton, not a very good hitter, batted 167. He's going to take a pitch from Newcomb. It's going to be a 25, and that's a strikeout. So one out here in the top of the second. Next is Ahmed Rosario, and that's a 37. And that's an out. What kind of an out? A four. That's a ground ball to the second baseman. Albies, Albies throws out Rosario by half a step. Rosario can fly. And Juan Lagares. Juan Lagares starting this game in center field. Um, usually they have a combination of J.D. Davis or, or uh, uh, Cano plays second. And when Cano plays second, McNeil plays either third base or left field. Then you have J.D. Davis who plays left field or third base. And usually it's Nimmo in center and also Conforto in right. Here's the pitch to Juan Lagares. It's an 87. That's off the pitcher. That's an out. It's a six out because of the modifier. And that's a hard hit ground ball at Albies. Albies flips to Freeman, and that retires the side. So three up, three down. That was very, very quick. Everything comes off the cards pretty much. I'd say 85 to 90 percent. Now nobody beats payoff pitch. Payoff pay, pay, payoff pitches. I played a week with payoff pitch and never looked at a chart. And I, I have some things memorized, but it's not chart based. It's card based. So that if you if you really you know uh, dislike charts, I say 100 percent, 110 percent payoff pitch. 
It's a great system. I have all the sets. Maybe I have one or two sets that I don't have. That's all on payoff pitch. I got to get back to my Mets replay. And then the next replay I do, I'm going to pick a team that wins because that I think got me down playing, playing that replay. So I haven't played, I haven't played a uh, payoff pitch because uh, the Mets are b- about to lose a hundred games with me as manager. And that's a shot to my, uh, my confidence. Um, as you know, I'm, I won the, the award for best tabletop manager on, uh, manager on uh, YouTube. Uh, basically, uh, I was uh, self self uh, chosen, self elected for that prize. And uh, but I'm very pr- prideful of of having won that. Um, all right, Nick Markakis, he's a lefty batter, lefty versus lefty, and that's a 15, and that's going to be a base on balls. And just in case there is a, uh, if you whoever like some guys are really into the splits. So pitcher advantage, left-handed specialist, batter, right-handed, only a specialist come into play. Batter takes an advantage. So in this case, lefty versus lefty, only if they're a lefty specialist versus a left-handed batter would he uh, get an advantage. So the advantage is not always there. It's just for those guys that are on the bench, so you would bring them into the game because they're bringing something. So some guys in there are lefty specialist batters or lefty specialist pitchers, and they gain an important advantage throughout the game if you use them the right way. So there's a lot of strategy in this game beyond, you know, just the, the kind of, you know, this guy does well against lefties and this guy does well against righties. It, it, it's, it's specific guys that in major leagues are used on the bench to be brought in as pinch hitters in certain situations and certain like loogies that come in to face certain batters or a certain part of the lineup that has a couple of lefties in it that plays a role in this game. So you have to be very, very conscious uh, uh, of that happening. And you have to be thinking about that in the later innings. I don't worry about that in the, in the earlier innings at all. So Dansby Swanson, it's a 92. And I know that's off the pitcher's card. So that goes fast. It's a nine and that nine or F eight. So fly ball center field. And that's out number one. So Ligaris runs that down. And it's J- J- John Camargo. I don't know if they pronounce it John or Johan, but I pronounce it John. I mean, anyway, Nick Markakis is on it first. And here's the pitch. So it's a 67. That's a 67. That's going to be off Vargas. 67 is going to be a strikeout. So Camargo down swinging for out number two. And I had to pull this guy out of the extra players. His name is Alex Jackson. Alex Jackson played in four games, had 15 plate appearances, batted uh, 0-0-0. So he's got no hits on his card. So I love this. So Alex Jackson. But I wouldn't know that. I wouldn't know that. But he's a pretty decent catcher. He's a four, and he's a pass ball A, which he doesn't – he's a defensive specialist, I guess. And that's a 72, so it's not a wild pitch. 72, and that's going to be off the pitcher's card, and that's a strikeout. So Alex Johnson strikes out, or Jackson, excuse me, the catcher strikes out, and that retires aside. So now it's going to be Jason Vargas steps in the box. He is a C pitcher hitting card. So, ah, there he was. I was looking for that C when I was trying to show you, and it was I already had put it into the lineup. All right, so here's the pitch to Jason Vargas. We're in the top of the third, and there's no score. That's an 86. So I know that that's off Newcomb. That's going to be an out. An eight is a fly ball to right field. Shallow right running in is Marcakis, and he makes the running catch. So he got a good jump on that. And next is McNeil, a 22, and that's a strikeout. Jeff McNeil strikes out for out number two, and it's Pete Alonzo. And a 28 on Pete Alonso's card is a strikeout. So it's a flyout and back-to-back strikeouts of the two big guys, of the, the flying squirrel and of the polar bear, strike out consecutively to end the top of the third. So in the bottom half of the third, Jason Vargas is going to face the pitcher, Sean Newcomb. He has his own pitcher hitting card. So that's very cool. I think every most pitchers come with a pitcher hitting card in the set. So I, I highly recommend ch- checking out this set. Diversify. It's good for your brain. Uh, this is a 24. 24, 0 to 49 is a strikeout. So that's pretty simple. It's fast moving. 
That's a 94. I know that's going to be an out of some kind of six, and that's going to be a hard hit ground ball to shortstop. Rosario up with it, fires the first, and gets Albies for out number two here in the uh, bottom of the third inning. There's no score in this game. That's a 17. A 17 is a walk. So Josh Donaldson manages a base on balls, and he's at first base, and now we're going to start looking for the wild pitch. That's a 26, and a 26, Freeman goes down swinging, and that retires the side. So Vargas is looking smooth. Sean Newcomb against Michael Conforto. Conforto's 0 for 1. He struck out in his last at bat. That's a 29, and he strikes out here. Goes back to the bench shaking his head. J.D. Davis, a 16, and that's going to be ball four. So Davis walks, so there's a runner on first now. Now we got to look out for the wild pitches, but that's a 22, and a 22 is a strikeout. Travis Darno strikes out. Who's next? It's Keon Broxton with two outs. Keon batted 167, so he's not much of a threat, but something could happen off Sean Newcomb's card. And it's a 15, and a 15 is a strikeout. So Broxton strikes out and that retires the side. So this is the game that – I mean, this is one of the games that moves the fastest. So if you want to get a quick game in 20 minutes, you can do it with deep drive baseball. 23, 23 is a strikeout. Ronald Acuna. Fans. And it's Nick Markakis with one out. It's an 82, and that's going to be an out on Vargas's card. A three is a ground ball to the third baseman. J.D. Davis fires the first, gets Marquecas for out number two. We are in the bottom half of the fourth inning. No score. 44. That's going to be an out on Dansby Swanson's card. We, he rolled a one. That's lined and caught by the leaping Rosario. So Rosario timed it perfectly. Dansby Swanson hit it right on the screws, but lined it to Ahmed Rosario. Sean Newcomb is going to face Ahmed Rosario, Juan Lagares, and Jason Vargas. Here's the pitch. It's a 52. That's a deep drive off Sean Newcomb's card. So let's see what happens here. That's going to be a 0-5. So that's going to be within Ahmed's home run range, right? But it's got an, a little symbol, and that says park 0-21. to So since we roll 0-5, that's going to be within – the the ballpark range that means we got to look at the ballpark card we rolled a nine so that's a deep drive to right field back goes nick markakis to the track to the wall makes the catch on the warning track up against the wall holy smokes so that's a deep fly out just missed that one to markakis and right one away juan lagaris so you don't really know what's going to happen but it's a deep fly ball and that's that, that's there's a lot of drama there there's a, definitely a lot of drama. 75. And that's going to be off Sean Newcomb's card, and that's a strikeout. So Ligaris is fooled by the curve, and it's Juan uh, uh, Jason Vargas, excuse me. And that's a 45. 45 is an out, and what kind of an out? A five. That's a ground ball, second base. Ozzie Albies up with it, flips to Freeman, and that retires the side. We are in the going to the bottom of the fifth. So this is a super fast-moving game, and once it hits the seventh inning, it slows down a lot. But it's right now it's 0-0. Um, the only hit – New York has the only hit of this game, and it's John, John Camargo, Joan Camargo. And it's a 44. That's going to be an out off Camargo's car. That's a two. That's a comebacker. Vargas feels his position and throws out, throws out Camargo one to three. Alex Jackson – who never had a hit in 15 plate appearances. That's a 94, and that's a four, and that's a ground ball to second base. McNeil playing second today, plays third, plays left, plays right, and plays second. Sean Newcomb, two outs, bottom of the fifth. And that's a 60. A 60 is a base on balls. So Vargas walks the pitcher. Not something you want to do here. And it's gonna be, he's going to be facing Ozzy Albies. Albies batting from the right side against a lefty, against a southpaw, Jason Vargas. Here's the pitch. We're looking for the wild pitch. There's none there. Got to be a, a zero red to start that. One, two. That's a 12. That's going to be a single. And Newcomb, Newcomb is very slow, so he's going to stop at second base. 
So it's a single for Ozzy Albies. Runners on first and second with two outs. Uh-oh, something's getting started here. Something's brewing in, uh, in SunTrust Park land. Josh Donaldson. Now, Josh Donaldson, uh, he's, he's got good power. So he's dangerous for sure. Oh, Jesus. He's dangerous for sure. That's an 89. That's going to be in Vargas's outrange with a one. And that's going to be popped up. High pop-up to the left side. J.D. Davis under it. He makes the catch, and that retires the side. A little excitement there. Sean Newcomb, left-hander against Jeff McNeil, Pete Alonzo, and Michael Conforto. And that's a 36. A 36 is an out on McNeil's card, an 8, and that's a fly ball lined to Camargo in left. Camargo also plays the infield as well. He can play a few infield positions. Next is Pete Alonzo. This is the guy we need to, to get going. That's a 79. That's not going to do it. That's some sort of an out. It's a one, and it's popped up to the left side. I'm sorry, to the right side this time. And Freeman under it puts it away for out number two. We're in the top of the sixth. No scores. Both teams have one hit. Michael Conforto. And that's a 12, and that's going to be a base on ball. So Conforto walks. Going to have to start looking for the wild pitch now. Z, we're looking for 0-0 zero, zero to 0-5 zero to five for the wild pitch. J.D. Davis with two outs. Michael Conforto on first. And that's a 16. A 16 is back-to-back -back walks, ball four. So J.D. Dave, Conforto walks. J.D. Davis walks with two outs. And now it's Travis Darno. Now Travis Darno again, I had to pull his card out of Tampa Bay. Uh, he, he was like 0 for 43 with the Mets when they released him. But then Tampa picked him up, and he ended with a 250 batting average, about a 251, and had 16 home runs with 70 RBIs and just 400 plate appearances. So a full year may have seen him with 100 RBIs. So he, he came up big with Tampa Bay. And let's see if he does that here with his Tampa Bay card because this is definitely not his Mets card. So let's get uh, let's get a roll here. Sean Newcomb looks into Travis Darno. There's no score here in the top of the sixth. We are in uh, SunTrust Park, and that's a 26. Uh, nope, it's a 66. That's going to be off of Newcomb, and that's strike three. So Travis Darno strikes out looking, and that retires the side. The Mets leave two men on base. And after five and a half, there's no score. Jason Vargas pitching for the Mets. I still don't have to look too much at uh, endurance for Newcomb is seven. So I got to start checking that because he may be he may be done, actually. He may have gone seven. Well, he pitched six. And how many times did he go through the lineup? He may have only gone once through the lineup. So that would be seven. So basically, um, that's it for him. Oh, but if he pitched three perfect innings, which he has, because he's – let me see if he's pitched three. If, if you pitch three conse consecutive perfect innings – let me go back one. Hold on. Let me undo so I can look at the box score. Uh, so he pitched a perfect inning there. Nope. nope per he, he needs to pitch three consecutive perfect innings. And I guess perfect innings means nobody gets a hit or a walk. I guess that's what it means. You get a plus one in your endurance. So he doesn't have that. So I'm going to have to basically pull Newcomb at this point because that's it for his endurance. So redo and Vargas is going to face Freddie Freeman. Here's the pitch. That's a 31. That's all Freeman's card. And that's a out. Well, kind of an out. And Freeman, it's a comebacker to Vargas. Vargas feels it, throws the first for out number one. Ronnie Acuna. It's a 99. That's an out, a two out. It's a ground ball to the first baseman. Now I roll an eight-sided die. If it's a one or a two, he flips to the uh, to the pitcher, and he does not. He takes it himself. So Alonzo takes it himself for out number two, retiring Acuna. And with two outs, it's a Nick Markakis. And that is, oh, that is going to be a 56. A 56 is a line drive base hit for Markakis. So Markakis is on with a single, two-out single. Now we're going to look for a wild pitch. And that's an 84. That's going to be off Vargas. That's going to be an out, a seven. That's lifted high fly to left field. Back goes Rosario. In comes Broxton. Broxton calls him off. 
and makes the catch and now retires the side. We're going to have a new pitcher here for the Braves. And this is where I tell you that the game slows up a little bit, not because of the, the actual mechanics of the game, but simply because of all the changes you got to make. So, um, guy named Chad Sabatka is going to come in. So I'm going to bring in Chad Sabatka. So new, Newcomb pitched a one-hitter. And Chad Sabatka is coming in there. Oh, include him as a – let's get rid of that. Uh, let's cancel. Let's do that one more time because it asked me if I wanted Sabatka to come in at, on uh, – yes, include as offensive sub in that spot, in that spot in the lineup. Yes. All right, Keon Broxton. So Newcomb is out. And uh, it's going to be Keon Broxton leading it off. And that's a 68. So that's going to be off Sabatka. 68 is a base on ball. So – Broxton walks. Now, Broxton is a 4C. Sabatka is a plus 3, so that makes him a 7. And the catcher is Alex Jackson. Alex Jackson doesn't have any arm rating, so he's going to be a 7C. So we're going to try to steal second. I don't do this very often, but in a close game like this, I'm going to try to steal second. I'm going to roll one die, steal second, and I roll a 9. Stolen base for a C is going to be 56. All right, so I got to roll I got to roll the other two. So it's a 9, but it's a I have to roll uh Yeah. All right, 20 um for a C. So for him to steal a base as what was he a 4 plus 3 is a 7. So for him to steal a base as a C, I would have had to have rolled 42 to 66. Oh, that's caught stealing. Zero to 41. Oh, and he does steal second. Holy smokes. Okay. He does steal second because he's a C base stealer. He's a C base stealer, but uh, Sabak is terrible at holding runners on. So that makes him a C7. And a C7, I rolled a 20. But I also, a, a 20. Yeah, I have to roll two dice. I don't know why I rolled one. I got confused there. All right, and that's going to be a, a stolen base for Keon Broxton. All right, so let's click on Broxton. You just put in stolen base, and that's it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What happened there? What just happened? Uh, stolen base. Oh, uh, there you go. S steals first. I, wait a second. Undo. It said he steals first. Okay, let me click on Broxton. Stolen base. No, second now nah, stolen base. There he is. He's on second base. So Broxton is on second. Ahmed Rosario, Chad Sabatka, and that's going to be a sixty-four, and that's going to be ball four. So we're going to pull Sabatka because uh, well, you know what? We're going to let Sabatka first and second. Who else we got here? Hold on a second. Luke Jackson is like their closer. He's their main guy. Uh, I already have some of these guys in my brain. In terms of uh, Toussaint, Minters there. Josh Tomlin is another guy I could bring in. Wes Parsons. I had to pull him out of Colorado. He starts the season. So I'm going to bring in – I'm going to make a pitching change. I'm going to bring in Parsons because I don't like how Sadaka is pitching. So I think I have to write in Parsons. Wes – let me just double check. I don't see him in here anywhere. So I'm going to write in Wes Parsons. Wes. And he's a right-handed pitcher, so he's going to come in and, and play Sabaka. Sabaka did a horrible job. He's useless. Send him down to the minors. All right. Um, Wes Parsons against Juan Ligaris. Runs on first and second. Ligaris is looking to bunt here. We're looking to bunt to move the, the winning run to third base. Or the go-ahead run, excuse me, to third base. So we're going to look at the bunt chart. And here's the bunt chart. So uh, – Roll play as normal. So I'm going to roll the play as normal. And that's a 47. A 47 is going to be an out. So that tells me that I have to look in the out section. I rolled a 1, and a 1 is lead runner thrown out. So that's it. That did not work for me. And who did? Who threw him out? I'll tell you right now. 
It's a six. A six is a first baseman. It's going to be three. So he bunts it to the first base side, and Freeman, who was crashing in on home plate, picks up the ball and fires to, um, I guess, Swanson with the wheel play. So it's going to be a, a three to six fielder's choice. Definitely not what I wanted. Three to six fielder's choice. And runner at third is out, forced out. Everybody else just moves up. So that's too bad. Ligaris failed. Now, one thing I have to I have to mention that bunting is not a bit. I mean, bunting is kind of generic. I don't see that there's any uh, that that a certain guy gets an advantage for bunting. It's kind of like the luck of the draw, pretty much. You know, it's but but I'll tell you what does happen. Um, if there's a fast runner on base, he has a better chance of making it to the next base. So that's one factor that comes into play. But individual bunting ability, and I don't think that that matters because really, who bunts anymore? It's not a real, it's not a reality. But if you're playing older seasons, you may be like, mm. but anyway, I, that's not a big part of my game. And uh, he, I guess, the designer figures that hey, you know, uh, there's not an enough of a differentiation between guys that can bunt and guys that can bunt. There's not a lot of great bunters versus, you know, uh, there may be like a handful of great bunters and 99% of the guys can't bunt. So just, I'm going to just make it like one chart and it's going to just be generic. It's a little bit like, uh, like Stratomatic does it. Although Strat, to be honest and to be fair, Stratomatic basic does it like that, but Stratomatic advanced uh, also has like bunting ability on each player and they're A, B, C, D, or E, and that sort of thing. So it's more like, I guess, uh, Appa Basic does it, right? Appa Basic does it that way. And you know what? Either way, uh, the only difference is that with guys that are terrible bunters, I may not bunt, you know. But lately, I've been saying, well, you can't hit and you can't bunt. I don't care. I'm going to try to bunt. So uh, Vargas is up. We're going to bring in a pinch hitter here for the Mets. Um, against Wes Parsons. So if I bring in a lefty, they're gonna they're gonna counter with a lefty specialist. You see, this is where the strategy comes in, guys. This is where the strategy. Hey, how you doing, Molly? How you doing? Fifty five. Molly, Molly. I don't know how you pronounce your name, uh, but how you doing, brother? Deep drive is a new one to me. Yes, hooked on payoff pitch these days. Yes, so am I. Love payoff pitch. Yes, there's other rules for uh, hit and run. There are other rules for hit and run, and here they are. I'll show them to you. Oh, there's rules here for hit and run, and roll is normal, first play code. This is also generic. Okay, this is also generic. I guess if, uh, it's, if it's a walk, something happens. If it's a hit by pitch, it's a foul ball. If it's a strikeout, so if a guy – you don't want to basically hit and run with guys who strike out a lot because if it ends up being a strikeout, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. So I guess you can't say it's tr tr totally generic. It's influenced by the batter's ability uh, in terms of making contact. So good contact hitters, like let's say, you know, a, a Robinson Cano who had like 20 uh, or Felix Mian in the 70s who had 27 strikeouts in, in, in 700 bats or 700 plate appearances, that guy would mostly be in here. So he'd be, it'd be positive. It'd be something good. Um, I don't know where the hits come from. Um, oh, uh, lead runner, line out, runner doubled up, always plays over ground, defensive track. Oh, def out, strikeout, base on balls, single, single runner advance, two bases. So line out, I know that. So it depends on what the result is. So if it's a walk, if it's a hit by pitch, if it's a strikeout, if it's defense, if it's an out, if it's a line out, if it's a ground out, Slow runner uh, – uh, always play as a slow ground out. So that means the runner advances. If it's a fly out, runners hold. If it's a, a, a certain fly out, lead runner is doubled up. If it's like a shallow fly ball. All other out types are played as normal. So I don't know. Um, you know, you try to stay out of double play. That's basically what it's about. But if you hit a line drive, you're cooked. Um, so that's the, the hit and run. All right, so where are we here? So this is the strategy. This is where it slows down a little bit because you got to really be fair and play. But but it, it, it really is interesting 
and, and let me run by it with you. Um, if I, if I bring a pinch hitter for for Vargas right here, um, which I'm going to do because he's pretty much gone his his the distance or uh, met his endurance factor pretty much at this point. Um, so if I pull when I pull Vargas and I bring bring in a lefty, they're going to counter with a lefty. So I'm going to have to wait waste a lefty. I'm going to have to waste a lefty because then they're going to counter. If I bring in, uh, then I'm going to. They're not going to. Uh, they're, they're not going to be able to bring a second pitcher. So, for example, right here, I'm going to bring in a lefty specialist. Um, well, I'm going to wait till the, you know. I know Vargas isn't going to pitch. Both teams, both managers know Vargas isn't going to hit. That's what I meant to say. He's not going to hit. So I'm going to bring in a righty. Uh, no, I'm going to bring in a lefty because I want a lefty. Uh, I'm going to bring in a lefty, and that's going to be – what am I doing? Got to click on the guy batting. Okay. I'm going to bring in – I don't want to waste Don Smith. Don Smith is my best lefty. So I'm going to blow uh, – I got Nimmo. Nimmo's on the bench, I believe, and I could bring him in. I don't want to waste him either. I will bring Guillaume in. Let me double-check the stats uh, or the data for the game. This actual game was 11-7. to 7. The Braves won it. And I'm going to look at uh, how the Mets played this. Mets brought in Guillaume and Nimmo as uh, relievers, and they pinch hit with Smith. So I'm going to – what I'm going to do is I'm going to fake – I'm going to fake um, bringing in Guillaume. You see, so this is how it works in baseball. Uh, not that I need to tell you guys. But Guillaume is going to pinch hit. So that's a lefty. So they don't – now, do they want um, – that's my lefty. I have two other lefties on the bench. I also have Wilson Ramos on the bench that I could bring in. So they know that, right? So do they want Wes Parsons, face, a righty facing a lefty here? So a lefty specialist. So um, a lefty specialist has an advantage over a righty specialist, not over Wes Parsons. So I'm going to just let Parsons face Guillaume because I know if I bring in the lefty, the, the Mets are going to counter with Ramos. And I don't want – I'd rather pitch to Guillaume who batted uh, one, uh, 246, right, with one home run than facing Ramos who batted like 270 and has a lot more uh, 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 single pluses at driving runs. So I'm going to bring in Guillaume. And I'm gonna uh, and and uh, the Braves are gonna allow Parsons to f to uh, pitch to Guillaume because they don't want to face uh, Wilson Ramos. All right, so here I'm gonna roll runs on first and second, only one out. Guillaume is a lefty versus West Parsons a righty. Now I will bring in a lefty. I will bring in a lefty to face McNeil and then Conforto because I know the Mets aren't gonna pinch hit for those guys. They're not gonna bring in Ramos to pinch hit for those guys. You see, so I will bring a lefty, and my lefty specialist, I got a lefty specialist who's going to have an advantage, A.J. Minter and Johnny, uh, oh, you know what? Johnny Venters is a righty specialist. Oh, no, they're both lefty specialists. So A.J. Minter and Johnny Venters, who eventually goes to Washington in the second part of the season, they're my lefty specialists, and they're going to come in to face McNeil and Conforto and that, that, bunch, of, uh, that bunch of guys. Okay, so here's the pitch. I'm looking for a wild pitch as well. That's a 0 8. Had it been a 0 5 or below, it would be a potential wild pitch, pass ball, blah, blah, blah. So it's a 0 8. This is good for the Mets. So a 0 8 is going to be a single. Who do I have a second? There's only one out. So this is the situation here on the runner advance chart. Let me show you how that works. Uh, Ahmed, I'm going to make him fast. I already spoke to the designer about that. So he would be fast and it would be a question mark to try to score him. So he could potentially be thrown out at the plate, um, and that's not impossible. So you got to consider that. Um, in a close game like this, do I want my bases loaded with one out and my best hitters coming up, or do I want to try to basically um, score here and get thrown out at the plate while it's only the top of the seventh inning? Um, you know, so in a zero zero game. So, you know, I'm going to play it safe because I know what can happen. And uh, if Ahmed Rosario were very fast, 
If Ahmed were very fast, it would be different. He's only fast. And uh, and he's fast because I made him fast because I spoke to the designer and I said, hey, I watch this guy all year round. And this guy, once he gets going, can fly. I mean, he's by far the fastest man. Nobody can catch Ahmed Rosario. And for him to be just an average speed, but, but the speed, it's not really speed. The, the, the qualities on the uh, where it says run is not necessarily just the run factor. It's metrics played in there. And based on his metrics, he was on the cusp. This is what uh, Chris Witt told me. He was on, on, on the line between being fast and being average. So, of course, I'm sure Chris Witt doesn't watch 162 games of the Mets. So he wouldn't say, oh, this guy's definitely fast. He probably doesn't know him all that well. He's just going by metrics. I know him. That's why he's fast in my game. So he is fast. And you know what? Just for the excitement purposes, um, yes, my dog is caged, you know, and I'm going to pull him out of the cage. Hold on a second. He just got caged right now, and he knows I'm here, so he's freaking out. Hold on a second. What happened, boy? What Don't get in trouble. Don't get in any trouble. All right. He likes me to walk him when I release him, though. So that's now he may start crying again. All right. So um, where was I? All right. So we're figuring out if we're going to try to score. Let's try to score just to show you guys how it works. So this is the choice chart. This is the choice chart. I'm going to roll two dice. I'm gonna roll two dice and it's gonna tell us what happens. So he's very, he's fast and there are, there's one out. So he's not gonna get the boost for two outs. We roll a 17. So a 17, as you can see, a 17 here says runner is safe. So he scores. Now, if there, between 42 and 78, it would have to do with his speed. So the Mets go up one nothing on the RBI single by Luis Guillorme. So that worked out for us. And Rosario scores. And the runner on first, when there's a throw to the plate, goes to third unless it gets cut off. And I did not cut it off. I tried to throw to the plate. So it was runner on first and third. And, uh, and Jeff McNeil is the batter. This is where I'm going to bring in the specialist, and I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to bring in the lefty specialist, and you know he's a specialist by the circle around his his uh, the side which he throws on. So AJ Minter's coming in for Wes Parsons. So Wes Parsons uh, gives up the hit that allows the first run. So here the the bullpen, Atlanta's bullpen is uh, is is really uh, betraying them. So AJ Minter, let's. I'm looking for AJ Minter. Where is he? There he is. All right. So I'll show you how that works now. All right. So Wes Parsons is out. AJ Minter is in. Jeff McNeil, the batter. So it's lefty versus lefty here. Now a lefty specialist. He's a specialist versus a regular lefty means that there's the pitcher has an advantage. Okay. The pitcher has a 50 point advantage, and that means that if I, for example. Uh, roll a, a 16. Uh, let's let's make that an 18. If I roll an 18, I can make that a 58, and that'll become a single. Um, let's see. Well, if I roll a uh, let's say I roll a 07, right? Deep drive on McNeil, which would be potentially become a home run, potentially, or a double or a triple. I could make it a 57, which would become a single on AJ Minter's card. So that would be huge. All right. So basically, um, that's how it plays. So if, if I roll on McNeil's card, so this is not absolute, just like nothing in baseball is absolute, but it is an advantage, right? It is, it is an advantage and for the pitcher in this case, because if he rolls a deep drive, I can pull that and make it a single. So a potential home run turns into a single because A.J. Minter uh, gave him a good pitch that he couldn't handle. All right, so now we're going to have to bring in the infield in. That's another factor that's going on here, another little bit of strategy. You need, need to have the infield in right here 
in the top of the seventh. It's already late enough for that to happen. And we're going to have to start thinking about the bullpen for the Mets as well and see who's coming up. It's going to be Camario coming up. He's a switch hitter. So Jeff McNeil, let's get a roll. We haven't had a roll. We've done a lot of changing and manipulating, and now it's a specialist, A.J. Minter versus Jeff McNeil with runners on first and third with only one out. Infield is in. Donaldson, Swanson, Albies, and Freeman all on the grass. We just rolled a 38, so there's no wild pitch there. A 38 off McNeil's card is going to be an out. What kind of an out? This is where it gets exciting. It's an F8. So an F8, we got to go to the flyout chart. Under F8, what type of runner? Who's on third base? It's Ligaris. Ligaris, again, is another average speed guy. No, he's very fast. All right, great. So Ligaris was given very fast because, again, his, his metrics. But an F8 says very fast, he scores automatically on the flyout. So it's going to be a sacrifice fly by McNeil. Just what the doctor ordered to give the Mets that that extra insurance run, and there's no opportunity for um, Guillaume to go to second here, according to this. I don't know if we're gonna. I'm gonna have to create a home uh, home brew for that situation to do that every so often. All right, so that's gonna be a sacrifice fly. So how would I play that out? Sacrifice fly, center field, runner advances. What happens to runner on third? He goes home, advanced by batter. And runner at first is held up. That's how you play uh, I score. Very simple. Once you learn it, a little bit of a learning curve. But then once you get it, it's uh, it's it does everything for you pretty much. Uh, and when you hit undo, everything gets undone. It's like it never happened. You don't have to worry about anything else. All right, Pete Alonzo. Stats aren't scored until the end. By the way, they don't. They're not cumulative as you go. Uh, you have to wait till the end when you when you click uh, save. Then all the stats get saved. And you like I can tell you what Pete Alonzo. Pete Alonzo today is 0 for three. So he's, he's batting like 190. Uh, he's not doing well. But you, there's two outs. Luis Guillorme is at second now. I don't want to bring in a right-hander to face Pete Alonso because then I have Michael Conforto uh, coming up, and I'd rather have a lefty have that advantage with, with Pete Alonso. Um, so I'm just going to throw Minter, allow Minter to throw to, to Alonso. So Jeff McNeil. Uh, comes up big, clutch, and he hits that that deep uh, that middle medium fly ball to center field, but deep enough to score the very fast Lagares from third. Here goes. So that's going to be a 23. That's going to be off Alonzo's car, and that's going to be a strikeout. So Alonzo strikes out, not happy with himself. He's uh, slumping for sure. And that retires aside. So that's going to be it. But the Mets pick up two big runs. So that's great news for the Mets. And now we have Camargo and we have a righty, uh, Alex Jackson. And then we're going to have the pitcher. And that's gonna, we're going to see a pinch hitter there. So uh, in a close game like this, we're going to bring in Gazelman. I believe Gazelman's still around. I know he gets injured at some point, but he's still around. I just saw him yesterday the day before. So hopefully he's still around. I'm going to bring in Gazelman. Let me just look quickly at the, the box score, see – who they brought in in this game. Uh, they brought in Oswalt, Alvilon, and Gazelman. There we go. Gazelman actually went two innings. He's allowed to go two innings here, so that would be great if I get him to go two innings. But, and uh, and he could because we're in the beginning of the lineup pretty much. All right, so Gazelman is going to come in for the Mets. Against uh, Joan Camargo. Here's a pitch. All right, to 73 off Gazelman. That's going to be a strikeout. So big pitch by by Robert Gazelman. Strikes out Camargo. Next is Alex Jackson. I'm not going to do a lot of pinch hitting because I don't do a lot of pinch hitting. Uh, they don't know how bad he is, and I do, and that's my advantage. 88, it's an out. It's a zero out, and that's going to be lined right at Alonzo. Hit it on the screws. Oop, I hit the uh, ground out. Let me try that out again. Line drive, three. So that's going to be – that's going to be two out. Two out, and it's going to be a pinch hitter, not for for, uh, for Sean Newcomb, but for A.J. Minter. So we're going to bring in a pinch hitter here for A.J. Minter. And then uh, – 
we're gonna pro we're gonna bring in we're gonna bring in I had the other guy that I oh Johnny Venture is gonna come in to face Conforto. And then we'll bring in a righty after that. So let's get a pinch hitter. Pinch hitter is Charlie Culberson. We got flowers as well, but I'm gonna bring in Culberson. He's he's a guy who pinch hit a lot for them. Now, I don't know who they have as a lefty pinch hitter. They have any lefty specialists, but since there's no advantage there of any kind at this point, only if there was a, a, a righty specialist would a lefty specialist help us. All right. So Charlie Culberson is going to pinch hit for AJ Minter. Click on that. All right. And he had a pinch hit home in yesterday's game. Charlie Culberson. It's a 97. And that's going to be off Robert Gazelman's card. And that's a fly ball lifted to left field. Keon Broxton. Under it, makes the catch, and that retires the side. So my Mets are looking good, looking real good. That makes me happy. Gazelman does a good job there. And Mets are going to have uh, A.J. Minter. Um, the, the Braves are going to have a new pitcher. And who did I say it was going to be? It was going to be uh, Johnny Venters to face, to face the lefty. Conforto. So Johnny Venters is in the ball game. He's a lefty specialist, so he's going to get the advantage over Conforto. It's an 83. He's not going to need it. 83 is a strike guy. Strikes out. Conforto strikes out on the high cheese. Takes uh, takes a, a seat in the bench. And next is JD Davis against Johnny Venters. And that's a 90. 90 something or other. Let me see. It's a 96. And that's an oh, wait a second. 96 is a strikeout. So Venter strikes out Davis. And now it's Travis Darno. And that's a 46. 46 off Darno's card is a out. It's a ground ball to the third baseman. Donaldson up with it across the diamond and throws out. Uh whoever that was, uh, uh Darno. All right, so we're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Gazelman's trying to go for his second inning. Uh, we got Albies, the leadoff. He's a switch hitter. We may start bringing in lefties here because uh, we got a lefty specialist, and then we're going to have we're going to have Freeman, and we definitely want uh, a lefty to face Freeman because he's troubled, particularly if there's guys on base. See what happens. See what happens. Gazelman to Albies. It's a 76, and that is a strikeout. Big strikeout. Robert Gazelman coming up huge here in the bottom of the eighth. Two-nothing Mets. Mets have two runs, two hits, no errors, six left on base. The Braves, no runs, two hits, one error, six left on base. Josh Donaldson, but that could change at any moment. 39. 39 is an out on Donaldson's card. It's a six. It's a hard-hit ground ball. Rosario to his left, throws on the run, and gets Donaldson two outs. So because of that, we're going to allow Gazelman, uh, easy inning so far, we're going to allow Gazelman to face Freddie Freeman. If there's an issue, then we may have to bring in a lefty to face Marcakis. And that's a 74. There may not be an issue here. Uh, that's strike three. So Freeman called out on strikes, and that retires the side. Robert Gazelman comes up huge, huge, ginormous. All right, we're going to have a new pitcher for the Braves. It happens very quickly. New pitcher for the Braves because we got all righties coming up, five or six righties. And we got a bunch of guys in here that can – Josh Tomlin. Josh Tomlin comes in. Just hopefully this doesn't go into extra innings because then we're, gonna, we're screwed. We used a lot of pitchers so far. Josh Tomlin against Keon Broxton. All right, so this is a 0-3. This is a uh, – based on balls. Based on balls, Broxton doesn't have much of a card, so he walks on a 0-3 roll, which is like a deep drive roll. Next is Ahmed Rosario. And we st we tried to steal before with Broxton. Let me see how many stolen bases Broxton had. He had 10 stolen bases and 200 plate appearances. Eh, we already did it once. We're not going to bunt. That's a 77. 77 off Tomlin's card is an out, kind of an out. It's a zero out. That's a line drive. So we're going to have to roll. If it's a zero, nine, and 
to zero zero, it's a line drive double play. Nope. So it's a line out L six. Line out to the shortstop. And back to first is Broxton. Juan Ligaris. And that's a 67. 67 is a strikeout off Tomlin's card. And that's two outs. And now it's the pitcher spot. It's the pitcher spot. We're going to try to steal here. Um, you know what? We're going to try to steal. We're going to roll. Josh Tomlin is a hold minus 10. Holy smokes. No, we're not going to try to steal here. That's not going to happen off, off Josh Tomlin. So we're going to have to bring in a pinch hitter. Let's bring in one of our lefties who we have, Nimmo. We'll bring in – we'll pinch hit with Nimmo. He's still – he's having a neck issue. He's going to disappear for like three months because of uh, some sort of neck problem. So here goes. Brandon Nimmo is going to pinch hit for the pitcher spot. And I got to go, go check on my dog. Where's Brandon Nimmo? Where is he? There he is. Pinch hitter, Brandon Nimmo. We roll a 60. Ugh, that's not fair. All right. It's 28. We roll the 28. That's a strikeout. Nimmo goes down swinging, and that retires the side. All right. So now this is where it gets exciting for the Mets. According to the game, if you have a reliever, a closer that's in the game, um, you need to bring them in. Like you can't bring in another guy with a low ERA to act as your closer. So if you try to bring in, if you try to bring in somebody else that's not a closer to close out the game, you're penalized for it. So I'm forced to bring in Edwin Diaz because again, I don't know that Edwin Diaz is going to suck, right? I'm thinking. Hold on a second. I got to check something out. Make sure my dog's not doing anything weird. All right, sorry guys. Uh, I had to check up on my dog. My son's back, so now it's all good. All right, so we're gonna have to bring in Edwin Diaz. I was explaining there's a negative modifier if you try to be smart and try to game the system. So Edwin Diaz was the closer, and uh, I have to use him as a closer. If I don't, I'm I'm given a negative. This is so people don't game the system. So Gazelman sits down. And Acuna is going to face Edwin Diaz. Now, this is where Atlanta can easily come back. This is very true to life. Davis, how are you, Richard Davis? How are you, brother? This is you're in the best part of the game. It's the bottom of the ninth inning. Mets are up 2-0. And unfortunately, the Mets have to bring in their closer, Edwin Diaz, to face, really, Acuna, Marquecas, and Swanson. So uh, there's a big opportunity here for the, the Braves to come back because all – I mean, if you know the Mets season and Edwin Diaz had a, a 5.59 ERA, allowed like 14, 15 home runs in, um, you know, uh, 58 innings. So he allowed basically, you know, a lot of home runs for a reliever who comes in and pitches one or two pitches. Anyway, Ronald Lacuna. The score is two to, uh, two to nothing, bottom of the ninth. Mets are three outs away. So that's a 0-9. Already the, the 0 9 is going to be a line drive base hit to left. First pitch from Diaz is lined into left field. So again, he's not able to do his job, but he does have a crazy strikeout numbers. 67 to 94 strikeout. He almost has a 30% chance. Well, actually, it's more than that because it's only 50 numbers. Uh, so it's it's what? Uh, double that, I guess, a 60% chance. Right of of a of an out through by strikeout, holy smokes! In his total numbers, right? So 
All right, let's see what happens. Nick Markakis, run around first. Tying run is at the plate now. We rolled a, a 13. A 13 is a line drive base hit to right this time. So two pitches, two singles, first and second. And very fast for Acuna. That was a regular single, 13. Let me see if he goes automatically. Uh, no, he does not go automatically. He's very fast, I believe. Yeah, very, wait. Yeah, no, he's very fast plus. So you got very slow, slow, average, fast, very fast, and very fast plus. Very fast plus goes to third on that. But if there's two outs, he would get a boost, and he would have gone to third. So first and second, I'm going to play it safe. I don't want to make that third out at third base. So it's going to be first and second now with nobody out. Edwin Diaz on, on the mound for the Mets, which is definitely a nightmare. There's no doubt about that. And it's going to be Dansby Swanson. Now, you could question here if uh, you could bring up uh, should Swanson bunt. Um, I'm from the Joe Madden camp of, of coaching, managing, and I'm not going to bunt with, with Swanson at all. I'm just going to let him swing away now. I mean, you could argue, hey, listen, I think Swanson, who hit 17 home runs, um, is, is, can, can handle the bat and is going to be able to do something here. Um, so let's try that out. Uh, plus, Swanson strikeouts, he's got you know a 20% chance of a strikeout. So you don't want to – I don't want – because that's going to be trouble. So let's hear – let's roll. Here's the pitch from Edwin Diaz. And I'm also looking for wild pitches here. It's a 63. This is off Edwin Diaz's card now. Oh, no, excuse me, 63, right. And that's base on balls. Base is loaded. What did I tell you? Okay, this is what happened to the Mets the whole season. I got the 71 season. I'm enjoying it. Ah, very good, Richard. Sounds cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun game. You can try it out for a dollar. I mean, you can't go wrong. You know, at least even if you just send the guy a dollar, you're contributing to his, you know, to his to his project. I mean, the guy has nice cards, and I went over the cards at the beginning of this video, very specifically, all parts of the card. Um, all right, so this is the game. Two nothing Mets, bottom of the ninth, nobody out. Joan Camargo, the batter, he's a switch hitter. Edwin Diaz is on the mound for the Mets, and he's gonna stay on the mound for the Mets because he's their closer. So I don't see myself moving him because, uh, but I mean, you're a you're a, a single plus, an SI plus away from with Nick Markakis at second. Let's see, let's see Markakis is average. Um, I don't know if I have a faster runner. I don't want to really pinch hit for a pinch run from Markakis at this point. He's not that kind of player, and I don't know that I have any anybody so fast. I have uh, Matt Joyce, Tyler Flowers. Oh, I have Ender Enciarte, but he's not even uh, very fast. All right, so base is loaded. John Camargo, switch hitter, batting from the left side against Edwin Diaz. Uh, nobody out. It's 2 nothing Mets here in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the pitch. And, again, we're looking for zeros for wild pitches. We're looking out for that. It's a 15. So that's off Camargo's card, and that's a strikeout. Oh, big strikeout by Edwin Diaz. One away. Holy smokes. Infield's back for the Mets. They're looking for guarding the lines, infield back. Um, Alex Johnson. Alex Jackson, excuse me. Alex Jackson. And uh, I could pinch hit for Alex Jackson. I could pinch hit, and I'm going to pinch hit with Ender and Enciarte. I'm going to bring in Ender Enciarte to pinch hit. He's a lefty. Edwin Diaz is a righty. So not that it's going to have any effect that way. Only specialists get that opportunity. So let's say if I brought in a lefty specialist right now, he would face Enciarte, and uh, and he the, the, the lefty specialist would have an advantage. So let's, let's pinch hit here for a terrible hitting Alex Jackson, who's like a rookie type. Let me see. What, what is Alex Jackson's age? Uh, it doesn't say his age on here. Anyway, he, he's just – anyway, he only had a few bats. So we're going to bring an Ender and Ciarte to be fair to the Braves. I like to be fair every so often to the teams I'm playing. All right, Ender and Ciarte is going to come in, bat from the left side. The bases are loaded, one out, two to nothing Mets. Um, Edwin Diaz on the mound. 
facing Ender Enciarte, who batted 246 with five home runs and 230 plate appearances. He was injured for a lot of the season. All right, here goes. That's a 70. A 70 is a strikeout. Back-to-back -back Ks by Edwin Diaz. Holy smokes. Back-to-back -back Ks. And next is going to be Matt Joyce. Matt Joyce, left-hander. He's going to pinch hit. Everybody holds up on the strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts. Two outs now. And it's up to Matt Joyce. Now, Matt Joyce, I believe, used to be with the Tampa Bay Rays, I believe. I believe. And then he played with the A's. He's been around a little bit. But he kind of is a versatile guy who can play all kind of all the outfield positions. And he's a good pinch hitter. He's a guy that likes to, to you know, play his role. All right, so Matt Joyce versus Edwin Diaz. Two outs, bases loaded. We are in the bottom half of the ninth inning for the Braves. 2 nothing. New York. And that's a 26. A 26 is going to be off Joyce's card, and that's strike three. So Edwin Diaz, after lo loading the bases, strikes out the side, and he's going to pick up a save. The Mets are going to win it by a score of 2 nothing. That was an intense game. Um, and now I'm going to close it out, and I'll read you the line score. It's uh, Mets two runs, two hits, no errors, seven left on base. The Braves, no runs, four hits, one error, nine left on base. The winning pitcher is going to be uh, Vargas. Vargas is going to be the winning pitcher. Gazelman is going to get a hold. Oh, no, wait. Uh, Gazelman is going to get a hold. Save is going to go to Edwin Diaz. Pitched one inning. The hold is going to go to Gazelman. The loss is going to go to Newcomb, right? I believe so. Oh, no, the, the, the loss is going to go to Sabaka. That's right. Sabaka is the one who came in and walked the two guys that ended up scoring. So the loss goes to Sabaka, Chad Sabaka. And that's it. So I'm going to send myself an email with a box score, and I'm going to write this up for a couple of the forums on uh, Facebook and that's it so the Mets go eight and six now eight and six now the box score actually I, I don't know that I can open a box score here but uh, it does send you the box score to your email and you can open a nice box score there the only thing I don't like about the I score box scores is that um, it doesn't show the individual player's position. That's something that doesn't happen. So anyway, guys, that's it for the game. Mets win this game. Um, they played three with Atlanta so far, and I think it's a four-game set. Let me double check. I think it's a four-game set, so I have one more game to play with Atlanta. The game we just played was played on April 13th, 2019, Saturday. And the next game is going to be Sunday. It's going to be against the Braves. And I'll tell you the matchups. It may be DeGrom because I know DeGrom pitched Sundays a lot. And he does. He's, it's going to be DeGrom facing Julio Teron. This is going to be exciting. So I'm going to start setting that up for later. But I uh, thank you all for stopping by and making a couple of comments. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the stream. And I will talk to you guys later. This is CP Cards and Dice saying so long.